Good morning or good evening or good afternoon, wherever you may be in the world. Uh, from the team in the International Programs Office, we are excited to welcome you to the Arts and Science Exchange Orientation for exchange students who are coming to study with us for the fall or full year of 2021-2022. My name is Haley McCormick. I'm the Arts and Science Exchange Coordinator working in the International Programs Office, and my pronouns are she, her. I'll be facilitating this webinar today. And we're also joined by Janice Tuff, who works alongside me in the International Programs Office. Janice is our Study Abroad and Exchange Coordinator and, uh, sorry, Programs Assistant, and she will be monitoring the chat today. So if you've got any questions, make sure you use the chat to send them on over to Janice. Both Janice and I are working on your course registration request right now, and we've got some great updates for you. Um, so we'll be happy to kind of bring you up to speed on all of that. The purpose of our time together today is to provide you with an overview of where you should be now with your pre-departure planning and what the next about six weeks or so will look like. And then even a little bit further, we'll, we'll move further into the fall term and we'll talk about what your exchange ex experience at Queen's will look like. To begin our time together, I would like to acknowledge that Queen's University and Kingston are both situated on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabeg and the Haudenosaunee Nations. To recognize this is to reflect on the longer history of this place, one that predates the arrival of the earliest European settlers. And it's also to acknowledge the special relationship that exists between Indigenous nations here in Canada or as it's also known on Turtle Island um, and the land and the responsibilities that they have as caretakers to the land. At Queen's and hopefully in Kingston during your time with us, you will often hear acknowledgements of territory. They are, are an opportunity to begin any formal or important gathering by acknowledging the history of this land and the current situations on these lands. Um, and for the, the presenters or the gatherers to also reflect on their own positionality. So it's really interesting when I think about exchange and land acknowledgements, which again are meant to, to reflect on the history of Indigenous settler relations uh, here in Canada, because I think about exchange being an opportunity for students to uh, be learners on other people's lands. And I, I was an exchange student myself, so I often think about the responsibility, and it is a great responsibility that we have when we travel onto other people's lands. So during your time at Queen's, I hope that you'll pay attention to the land acknowledgements that you hear, that they will generate some reflection for you about your role in these conversations and in the circumstance when you step on these lands. And I also hope that you might seek out opportunities to learn more and to engage more with the history and again, the current dialogues happening here on Turtle Island. You can do that by enrolling in courses that focus on indigeneity. You can do that by attending free events on campus like the Queen's University International Center and Four Directions Intercultural Awareness Certificate, which we will certainly be letting you know about via email. Um, so there's lots and lots of ways to get involved, and I hope that you'll find a way that speaks to you to further engage with, uh, with, with this important topic and pressing topic while you're, you're studying with us. Today, we're going to cover four main topics. We want to discuss with you your, uh, our, safe, our plan for the safe return to campus, because we know you may have lots of questions about that. We want to talk about finalizing enrollment, your course enrollment. We want to talk about the beginning of your exchange term with us. So that's happening over the course of the next six weeks. And then we want to talk about the remainder of your term with us. So just a few things to keep in mind as you move through the, the, the next couple of months um, with us. So we're going to cover a lot. And the great news is that this is going to be a recorded session. Particularly, we're going to cover these topics within those various four uh, subjects that I mentioned. As I mentioned earlier on, we are recording the session, so please be conscientious of the degree to which you want to ask questions. Please also remember that this means that you can refer back to this recording and we'll also be sending the slides. So you don't have to write everything down, you don't have to memorize everything, you can refer back to this, there will be a reference. You can also use the chat box uh, to ask questions, you can send them to Janice either privately or publicly if you'd like to use your microphone to ask a question, we will ask you to hold on till the end of the session, just so we can keep everything moving because we've got a lot to cover today. And finally, if you feel like there's quite a bit of information that we're covering, then I would encourage you to uh, make an appointment and we'll let you know in uh, the follow up email you get after the session exactly how you can do that. We would love to meet with you and have a more in depth conversation about your particular circumstances. 
So let's start off with our safe return to campus. We're really excited that after a year and a half of working remotely, studying and teaching remotely, Queens is going back to campus this September. And we're even more excited that that means that international exchange students can finally join us again, because that was a long and lonely year without you. So I want to bring you up to speed on what our reopening plan looks like, just so that you're feeling comfortable and knowledgeable about what the situation is on campus. I recognize that this is a text heavy slide. We're going to go through it together. And I want to remind you that you can look at this in the future, because uh, we will send you the recording and the slides and that all of this information is publicly available on the Queen's website. So Queen's is working closely with the Kingston, Frontenac, Lennox and Addington Public Health Agency. That's our local public health agency. And we have been throughout the entire pandemic. We're very committed to the health and safety of our whole community in whatever ways that looks like. So physical health, yes, but also there's lots of conversations happening right now about mental health and returning to in-person activities because it's been a long year without some of those. We're following the advice of public health authorities and will guide and inform, those will guide and inform the approach of our return to campus. We are planning to resume in-person activity on campus this September, which is super exciting. Um, administratively, uh, we will see support staff return to campus in greater numbers during the fall term, and we will see near full in-person on-campus instruction. So what that means is teaching and learning your classes are mostly going to be in person, on campus, you'll be with a professor in a lecture hall again if you haven't been over the last year. In terms of other services that you might use at the university, so connecting with our office, working with the International Center, there will likely be some variance in um, how universities are providing support in the fall term as we return. So the priority really is to get students back in the classroom, professors back in the classroom, and the other units that have been virtual for the last year uh, are, are a bit of a lesser priority, still very important, but might have more of that hybrid approach. Really, our goal is to get you back in the classroom. Either way, you will absolutely be able to contact any member of the Queen's community if you've got questions. Our campus buildings are going to be open to the public beginning in September. And in terms of events on campus, which I'm sure many of you have questions about, in-person non-student-led events, so that would be university-run events, will be limited as well as student run events will be limited for the fall and anything that is being run in person has to be approved by the university so again health and physical and, and safety are super duper important uh, as we move into this return to campus um, and we are hoping that we will reach this new normal of on-campus operations by the winter term for any students who are with us for the full year. So what that means is, well, we see this hybrid return of staff at the university, so the offices that aren't responsible for teaching. Um, we should see a full return by winter 2022 if everything goes to plan. Of course, in the midst of everything, we're always ready to pivot because we know the pandemic can kind of throw some surprises at us. So that's always um, top of mind as well. What does this all mean for you? So I just want to break this down into eight kind of key considerations for you. We'll go through them quickly. Um, but what this means is uh, in that first box, before you come to campus, you need to download something called the University's Secure App. It's pretty much a COVID-19 self-assessment quiz, and you need to complete that before you come to campus. So you'll get more information about that via email. I've used it myself several times as someone who's not great with technology. It's super simple. I feel secure using it. And it's nice to know that everyone on campus is filling this out before they arrive. COVID-19 tests uh, are, are, you know, uh, are, are definitely an important consideration. So our testing requirements are based on public health guidance. You cannot visit campus if you are awaiting COVID-19 test results, and you can only visit if you have received a negative test result. In terms of what we're doing on campus to make sure that the physical environment is safe, we have enhanced both ventilation and cleaning protocols. Um, those were enhanced last year, they're continuing to be used, so you can be sure that the, the indoor settings you're in on campus are being thoroughly cleaned on a regular basis. And while you're indoors, you will be required to wear masks. So you'll see that in the bottom left corner of the screen, masks are required while indoors on campus, including in the classrooms, auditoriums, and if you visit an office. Now, I know as a student, I used the cafeterias. I didn't use the gym, but I used the libraries <laughs> a lot. So looking at those last three boxes, we think these are services that you're probably going to be frequenting while you're on campus. So it's important to give you an update on 
where those are with COVID-19. So with dining and food services, those are cafeterias, cafes, restaurants, they are set to reopen safely this fall, but you'll need to be attentive to any guidelines that are posted and follow those. In terms of the athletics and recreation center, that is our gym, which you have free access to. It's going to be fully operational this fall. Again, just adhere to the guidance they post. And the libraries have been uh, adapting uh, their operations throughout the pandemic. So please also make sure that you check in with any postings, posters, or public guidance that they have posted um, when you enter them, just so you're aware of, of how you'll need to kind of engage throughout COVID while you're in the libraries. So hopefully this is helpful and gives you a little bit of context into what this return to campus looks like. Now, a recent update we got last week is that vaccinations are now being required for anyone coming to Queen's campus. So governments in Canada and across the world have deemed COVID-19 vaccines safe and effective. As of August 19, Queen's is requiring all faculty, staff, students, and visitors to campus to be fully vaccinated or to have plans to become fully vaccinated before the fall term. Queen's is planning on hosting an on-campus vaccine clinic for students at the beginning of the fall term. So we'll soon have updates for you on what this vaccination requirement, which is quite new, came out August 12th, means for you. So please stay tuned either for an email from our team or from the International Center. Um, and we'll also have more information when we receive it on that vaccine clinic. So more information is coming. Please continue to monitor your Queen's email. I hope this looks familiar. We had this pre-departure preparations checklist in our last webinar, which was our course registration webinar in July. We've updated it a little bit. And just as a reminder, this is not um, a tailored checklist specifically for you. These are some general things, our team things that you should consider. Because of timing, I'm not gonna walk through it all with you today, but I encourage you to take a look at it, compare it to the own your own checklist that I'm sure you have. Um, the one to do that I really want to highlight is that I sent travel app. So hopefully you've received lots of information about this. This is an app that was created by Queens or is, is being used by Queens. It's meant to help make sure your travel is as smooth as possible as an international student. Please make sure that you download this and you engage with it, you fill it in, because it's going to help us help you over the next couple of weeks. Now, I know that was a lot of information about returning to campus and safety during COVID-19. I want to pause for a second and ask if there are any questions at this stage about safety um, and COVID-19 with Queens. Janice, are we seeing anything in the chat? Nothing in the chat, Haley. Amazing. Okay. And I guess I'll just end that section with just as a reminder, you know, these are what our current plans are. But as we all know, living through this pandemic, flexibility and adaptation is so crucial because we just never know what this pandemic is gonna <laughs> is gonna do next. So um, Queens is very, very ready to pivot, um, ready to support students, staff and faculty in whatever way it needs to. And we hope that that brings some, some comfort as you prepare to join us. Now I wanna shift gears and move into something that I'm sure is top of mind for you all. And that's finalizing your course enrollment. So you've already done a lot of the work. You've done your research, you've sent us your course requests let's talk about what the next steps in course enrollment are and those are going to take place from now until September 20th for fall and full year courses. Here's the timeline we're working on. As of right now, the departments that we work with are reviewing the course requests that you send to us. We imagine that likely by next week, by August 27th, they will have finished reviewing your course request. So at that time, we would encourage you to check your Solus account, see what's there. And if there's something that's not there, don't panic, just reach out to us. We can give you some more context into what's going on with your courses. Janice has been working incredibly hard at connecting with students that you might have heard from her or you might soon be hearing from her. If the departments we're working with have suggestions for you in terms of alternative courses or have any questions or concerns about what you requested. So it's quite normal during these next couple of weeks for you to hear from Janice or I if there are any questions or suggestions that we have for your course enrollment. Now that's happening over the next two, three weeks. But as of August 30th, we enter a really exciting time in the course enrollment period. We begin open enrollment. Open enrollment at Queens is known as the add drop period. This is a time during which you can add or drop as the name indicates courses. And we're here to help you with that. So I'm gonna walk you through what that process looks like in a flow chart on the next slide. September 7th 
is the first day of classes. That's the first week of classes. During this first week of classes, we see a lot of change in course enrollment. Queen students will often drop courses and add courses. So we see lots of movement and courses that might be full uh, right now or might have filled up during this August course registration period could become available again. So it's really important to be on the SOLAS timetable during the week of September 7th if you decide you want to make a change, because that's when you're going to see the most flexibility in terms of course availability. And I would remind you to refer back to the, um, the legend that we gave you uh, with the circles and the squares um, when you're using SOLAS just to determine what courses are open and what are closed. Um, the last date that we have on this timeline is September 20th. That is the date that open enrollment ends for fall and full year courses. So after September 20th, you cannot enroll in fall or full year courses anymore. Winter term students, we will be in, or sorry, full year students, we will be in touch regarding any of your winter term courses because there's more information to come, but that happens later in the term. So we'll be in touch at a later date. So hopefully this is helpful in terms of understanding what the next month or so looks like for course registration. Now let's take a minute and talk about adding and dropping courses during open enrollment or that add drop period. That's from uh, August 30th until September 20th. During this time, we want you to ask yourself this question. Janice, can you see my mouse if I'm moving my mouse on the screen? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, so we'll use my mouse as a pointer here. <laughs> um, so uh, during open enrollment from August 30th to September 20th, we want you to ask yourself this question. Am I adding or dropping a course? If you are dropping a course, you can follow the flowchart down here. And what we're going to encourage you to do is send an email to ipo at queensu.ca with the course that you want to drop. We can drop that on your behalf. Um, Janice, I'm just going to pause for a second. Can you just, uh, can I get you actually to check the chat? I'm going to make sure that my computer has some power because it's starting to wane on me. So I'm going to disappear for a second and maybe you can check the chat while I, while I do that and ask if there's any questions at this stage. Are there any questions, Janice? Yes, so we have one, Haley. So student wrote in, if we've had COVID in the last 90 days, but we have been fine for multiple weeks after, but it is still likely that we will still test positive when taking a test. If we need a negative test when we come to campus, how do we address this? That is a wonderful question. Firstly, um, I really hope you're, you're doing well um, with your health. Uh, it's good to know that you're recovered and you're, you're coming to campus, um, I recommend that you send an email to ipo at queensu.ca. We will look into that with our colleagues on campus and we'll get back to you. Perfect. Okay, so sorry about that little break there. Um, had to take a break to make sure my computer had the power to get through the rest of our session. So let's start over from the beginning of the flowchart. During this open enrollment period from August 30th to September 20th, ask yourself, are you adding or dropping a course during open enrollment? If you're dropping a course, send an email to ipo at queensu.ca with the name of the course you wish for us to drop. If you want to add a course, you've got a few more steps to take. So if you're adding a course during this time, we want you to ask yourself which faculty offers the course. It will either be Commerce, School of Graduate Studies, Engineering, or Arts and Science. And we've got specific instructions beside each of these faculties for how you will request that course. As mentioned, we're envisioning most offices are probably gonna be virtual or in some form of hybrid during the first few weeks of September. For that reason, we think it's going to be easiest for you to be sending emails to make requests to add or drop courses. So for Commerce, please send your request to Keely Maloney, who is the uh, incoming uh, exchange advisor for Commerce students. For graduate level courses, send those courses right through to the IPO account. We've got your transcript on file. We know our colleagues at uh, the School of Graduate Studies. We can liaise on your behalf to see if you can enroll in a graduate level course. For engineering courses, we're going to be providing you with a list of the engineering departments. I think there are around four or five, and we'll give you full instructions on how to contact them. You'll be contacting them on your own. A quick note here on commerce graduate and engineering courses is that you are limited to a maximum of two of those courses 
because you can only take two courses outside of arts and science. So please keep that in mind. And please know that Janice and I will be checking as we near the end of open enrollment, that's September 20th, to make sure you are not over enrolled in courses outside of arts and science. If you are over enrolled, we will contact you, but we will need to drop you and make sure that that number sits at a two before open enrollment closes. So keep that in mind as you navigate this process. Now, if you want to request an arts and science courses, we're happy about that. Um, we want you to ask yourself a third question. That is, what is the level of the course? If the level of the course is 100 or 200, you've got an easy answer. You can send your name, your student number, and the course requests into IPO at queensu.ca. And we in the office can review that request because it's an introductory level course. And we can determine if we can enroll you or not. If the course is a 300 or 400 level, it's a bit more advanced. So we would need you to send your course request, your password protected transcript, and your student number onto the relevant department. Just like engineering, we're going to be sending you a list with all of the relevant names and email addresses of the people you'll contact for arts and science. And that's what we include here in this little speech bubble. Remember to use our department guide to determine which departments will assess what classes and therefore who you contact. Before I move on, are there any questions about this process? Again, you'll get this, um, you'll get this flow chart so you can reference it during the add and drop period. Anything coming through the chat, Janice? Nothing at this time, Haley. Wonderful. So we'll move on. And if you do have a question, we're happy to address it later on in the session. So I want to refresh us on these open enrollment periods. For fall term courses, they are from August 30th to September 20th. For full year courses, they are from August 30th to September 20th. If you are a full year student here with us and you're looking at a winter term course, open enrollment is technically from August 30th all the way until January 22nd, which is the last day to add or drop a winter term course. So there's a bit of a difference there if you are a full year student that we just want you to remember because there's a benefit to remembering that. And remember that we'll be in touch with full year exchange students regarding changes to your winter term schedule in the next few months, likely in October or November. Now, we usually get some very similar questions every year on, uh, on course enrollment. So I thought we could quickly go through a few of them just in case there, there are things you're wondering as well. So a common question we get is, can I take a course outside of the Faculty of Arts and Science? So engineering or commerce or graduate course? Um, the answer is yes, but there's a maximum of two. Um, so instead of visiting the IPO at this time, we'd ask you to send us an email if you've got any questions about this. Um, another question we often get at this time is, what if the course I want to take has a waitlist? Can I be added to the waitlist for the course? The answer is yes. What we would encourage you to do is email the relevant arts and science department. Um, you can contact our team if by September 20th you are still on a wait list and you need to find an alternative course. So first your step would be contact arts, the arts and science department, ask if they will put you on the wait list. Uh, if they do and you're still on the wait list but that September 20th date is fast approaching and you're getting kind of nervous because you need an extra course, then reach out to us. We'll be doing some advising. You can contact us via email. We can help you find a solution there. Another question we're getting a lot these days is, can I enroll in an online course? And the answer is yes, but we would encourage you to consider whether you want to learn online or in person, having a mix of course. Um, but especially right now with COVID, you know, keep your, your comfort level as a uh, top of mind consideration and contact us if you have more questions about online courses. Another question we get this time of year is how do I request academic accommodation? So that's academic supports like a note taker or um, potentially extra time for assignments or extra time on exams. Please know that we do have a student accessibility services office. Um, we've included the link here. It's really easy for you to register for the, um, with Queen Student Accessibility Services. They've just recently revamped their processes. We would really encourage you to reach out to them because as an exchange student, you have full and free access to their supports. So know that those exist for you should you want to use them. Some more questions we get this time of year is, will you sign my home university paperwork? So sometimes we get learning agreements from exchange students or we get um, arrival certificates that need to be signed. And we're happy to sign those for you. You can send them to us via email. We can sign them using Adobe, but we can't sign them until September 20th passes. So just keep that in mind. 
common question we receive right now is, can I enroll in courses if they're taught at the same time? And the answer is no. Uh, classes are not recorded at Queen's and therefore participation or and often participation is necessary. So professors might be asking you to speak in class and things like that. Um, so for these reasons, it's not possible for you to enroll in courses that are taught at the same time. If you are looking at two courses taught at the same time, unfortunately, you're going to have to make that hard decision and choose between the two. A question I've gotten a lot over the last little while is, will my professor let me leave my class in time to get to my next class? So if my class A ends at 2.30, but my class B starts at 2.30, how do I get there in time? Can I teleport? No, I mean, not that I'm aware of, that's pretty amazing if you can, but um, what you should know is that professors will end their classes usually about 10 minutes early so that everyone has time to get to their next class or commitment. So do rest assured if you are seeing classes that are back to back, that you'll have a bit of flex time to get from uh, building to building on main campus. Now, another concern that I imagine students might have is what happens if COVID-19 peaks again during the fall term? And as I've mentioned, Queens is prepared to pivot to online teaching and learning should public health requirements change. So we've done it in the past. We're committed to teaching and learning um, and, and certainly are prepared to make those changes. So we still adhere to public health, um, but we're still supporting students and our overall mission of teaching and learning. And as you'll note at the bottom, we want you to contact us if you're having any difficulties. We will work with you quickly. Um, we know that a lot of your concerns are time sensitive, so please never hesitate to reach out. So that wraps up our second topic for this session, which is um, you know, looking at finalizing that course registration. Are there any questions about that session in particular coming through the chat? Nothing at this time, Haley. Okay, amazing. So hopefully this has been clear and helpful for you all. We're gonna shift gears still in the same kind of time zone now between, between now and, and September, um, but we're gonna talk about other parts of your arrival to campus and how you'll prepare to make the most of your exchange right from the beginning. So just like our pre-departure prep, we wanted to provide you with a tentative arrival checklist. This is based off of kind of what we're hearing from students. It's based off what the International Center is suggesting. And of course, it's not specific to you or your needs. So this is general. We suggest that you take it and apply it as uh, you deem fit to your own arrival checklist. But here are a couple of things that you should do when you do physically arrive in Kingston. Definitely let your family know you arrived safely. When I was an exchange student, I was a few days late doing that. And my family wasn't very happy with me. So <laughs> that's my personal addition. It's very kind, especially when travel is difficult with COVID to let them know you're here and you're safe. Um, quarantine if needed. So I know that the uh, border regulations are shifting a lot right now. They can be quite confusing. We want to reiterate that if you have questions or concerns about entering the country, about your study permit or visa, about quarantine requirements, that you should reach out to the international student advisors, Arthur and Amanda, in the quick. Janice, do you mind putting their email address, isa.queensu.ca, in the chat, just so folks can reference that? Our office can't advise you on this, but we will definitely help you can uh, help connect you with um, the international student advisors if you have questions about this. Also, the iSent travel app that we mentioned earlier is going to help you with that type of planning. Check in with your home university in Queens, of course. We want to we want to know that you're arriving and you're you're safe and things are going well. Add or drop courses as needed. Apply for academic consideration as needed. I'm going to talk about this in a couple of slides join some orientation programming and take a campus tour. Also information coming in the next few slides. Uh, as I mentioned, you can send your home university paperwork into our team via email. Download that uh, secure, note the Q in secure, Queen app before you come onto campus. That's what we mentioned earlier in the session. And then there's a couple of notes down here about finances. So you do need to play, pay the university health insurance uh, plan. I think that's plan, not policy on SOLIS. Uh, it's usually around 200 Canadian dollars uh, and there's a fee for each term. So that is typically due by the end of September and you should be receiving information about that from the International Centre. They administer that plan. So please ensure that when you're checking SOLIS you're looking for that and you are paying it in accordance with the payment methods provided by the university. Consider if your home university is requiring you to pay tuition or fees. I know some students aren't paying tuition to their home universities because they generally don't pay tuition, but most students do pay tuition to their home universities. 
your tuition is not due to Queens as an incoming exchange student, that tuition goes to your home university. So keep informed, keep getting updates from your home university. And finally, pay for your Kingston bus pass. So we'll send information about the Kingston bus pass out later this week via email so you get more information. Um, but you will need to pay, I think it's around $100. Um, once you have this bus pass, you will have access to a really, really efficient, and I'm not just saying that, I, I actually use the bus system. It's quite efficient, um, our bus system, and you'll have access to that with your, uh, with your bus pass. So more information to come on that. Now let's talk a little bit about those academic considerations I mentioned in the checklist. We know that some of you coming in um, may need to quarantine. Again, reference the, the Canadian government's border regulations and contact the ISAs if you have questions about that requirement. We've been working with the Faculty of Arts and Science on their academic considerations process to ensure that as an exchange student who may need to quarantine or maybe may experience some hiccups potentially with travel because of COVID, that you will have the opportunity to fill out an application to have academic consideration if you cannot attend classes in the first week or so. So we're going to follow up with more detailed information than what I'm providing here on the slide. But what we really want you to know is that we're aware that it's tricky to travel right now. There might be potential hiccups because of COVID and the faculty office is going to do what they can to ensure that you are not academically penalized on that front. So you can use this academic consideration process if you cannot attend in-person classes due to COVID-19 complications and more information will follow. Do note that classes are not recorded. This does mean that you cannot follow your classes remotely for the first few weeks. So if you are concerned that you might not be able to get onto campus, get into classes in those first few weeks, it's really important that you contact Janice or I just so we can guide you through this academic considerations process. And we can also give you some tips on how to stay up to date on your classes so you don't fall behind and you don't um, experience any academic, academic difficulties. So more information to follow on that note. We also know that in the next couple of weeks, you're going to be orienting yourself to campus. So there's three virtual programs that are happening. Uh, you're in one of them now, the International Programs Office's orientation. We're having our exchange-based orientation today. Tomorrow, we are hosting this uh, student experience focused orientation. So at that orientation, you're going to hear from two student leaders on campus. You'll hear about clubs and opportunities to get involved. And then on Thursday, you'll hear from Professor Margaret, who works in our Department of Languages, Literatures and Cultures. And Professor Margaret is going to talk with you all about making that academic transition into classes at Queen's. So she's going to give you some really great tips on how to do that with ease um, and also learn a little bit about what your goals are and kind of share some of her feedback and advice on that. The Queen's University International Center Orientation has been running since July. It's running through August. They're hosting a ton of really valuable sessions, including ones on financing, ones on housing, ones on traveling to, to Kingston and to Canada right now, and even ones about kind of like knowing your rights when you arrive on campus. So getting acclimatized to what the, the Canadian uh, situation might be in terms of a variety of things. So we really, really encourage you to attend their sessions if you can't attend their virtual sessions, know that they're also recording their sessions just like our team and they're posting those recordings to their website. So we'll include a link to those when we do our follow up after this session, which will be later this week. Finally, we've included uh, the new exchange and worldly transfer student orientation in a few of our emails. This is one we always like to plug. I do want to note that they do have a fee uh, for this uh, orientation. It's the only exchange orientation that has a fee. This is a really great though because it is all for upper year students. It's run completely by students. And as it says in the name, it's got to focus on helping exchange students make that social transition into life on campus. So I can't rec recommend it enough. And even though there is a fee, they do also have financial aid available. So I do recommend that you check that out. I think that uh, it actually might close tomorrow, their registration. So put that on your immediate to-do list um, so that you don't miss out on a great opportunity. And finally, in terms of orienting yourself to campus, we want to mention that the Student Experience Office let us know just yesterday that they are going to be hosting some limited in-person campus tours and they would love for exchange students to join. So you'll soon get an email with a link to register and sign up for those um, on campus tours. It's a great way to get to know the buildings, get to see the beautiful campus and potentially meet some other students as well.
So these are our tips for orienting yourself when you do get into Kingston and you get settled. Uh, actually, sorry, and to go back even before you're arriving, just as you're doing now. So also kind of a hybrid approach, which is really wonderful. In terms of supports at Queens, I wanted to kind of break this down into themes. So certain supports that you might need to access. Um, and I'm just going to provide a really high level overview of the main offices our team works with and will oftentimes refer exchange students uh, to. So more information will come. A lot of this, this webinar is to kind of give you the broad overview and we'll follow it up with more in-depth information that you can engage with if it's suitable for you. So in terms of academic supports, of course, the International Programs Office is responsible for putting you into your courses, but there is also the Queen's Student Accessibility Services that you can freely access, and that would be if you need to, you know, have a note taker or if you've got some accommodations at your home university that you'd like to see transfer over to Queen's. We're always happy to provide um, a referral or help you liaise with that office if you've got questions. There is also an office called Student Academic Success Services. They are fantastic. They're based in the Stauffer Library, which is our main library on campus, and they offer loads of really helpful tips. And a lot of them are geared to international students for making an academic transition to, um, to Queens. So we'll, we'll plug them in some of our upcoming emails. In terms of logistics, quite obviously, uh, I think your, your two main hubs will be our office, International Programs Office, and the Queen's University International Center. Our office is your main connection to your home university while you're with us. We talk with them all the time. And the International Center can help you with any non-academic logistical concerns. So they can give you some guidance in terms of cultural adaptation, in terms of uh, your, your health insurance, in terms of housing, and lots of other important things. In terms of health and well-being, there are a lot of uh, services that I wanted to point out here, probably the most actually of all of the, the four sections. Um, so there's a student wellness services office available on campus. They provide mental and physical health services. Um, so you could, you know, request to speak with a counselor if you have therapy at home and you want to continue that at Queens. You can also check in and speak with a doctor there if you're kind of feeling under the weather. That's completely free and available to you as an exchange student. There's the Athletics and Recreation Center. Like I mentioned, I'm not a big fan of the gym, but I've heard it's really good for balancing your physical and mental health. So you will have free access to our sixth floor gym um, and you'll be able to start using that in adherence with their COVID protocols once you arrive on campus. I wanted to point out that Queens has a really great campus security system. So when you are physically on campus, you're gonna see these tall blue lights um, all over the place. These are emergency lights. You can hit them if you ever feel unsafe uh, on campus and you want some support and you'll immediately have campus security come and speak with you. There's also the secure uh, app that I mentioned earlier. So campus security is very much a part of you feeling well and grounded while you're on campus. And we want you to know that they're there for you as an exchange student. Faith and spiritual life is really important as well. They're situated physically quite close to the International Center. Um, they're an office that you can definitely utilize to get some support and have some really fun social activities with. And we have a human rights and equity office as well. So if you are ever feeling like you've got some kind of concerns around that, human rights are being treated fairly on campus, you can certainly reach out to them. They also have some really cool free online educational services. So like online modules you can complete that we would recommend as well. And finally, housing. This might be a big question for you right now. Hopefully you've got kind of um, a, a good handle on what that will look like as you arrive on campus. If you have any questions, we highly recommend you reach out to Adam King, who is the off-campus living advisor. Um, Janice, I'm not sure if you could put Adam's name and, and title perhaps in the chat, just so folks can also reference that. Um, Adam is available to help you navigate the off-campus housing uh, search here in Kingston. So as I mentioned, that was a really speedy and very high level overview of offices we think can support you in these different areas. More information will follow in an email that you can dive into where it's relevant for you. So that wraps our section on what the next, like that kind of non uh, course reg entry will look like to Queens. Are there any questions on that front? Janice coming through the chat. Um, we did have one, Haley, but it was uh, discussed, but what happens if I get COVID-19 and or have to isolate while uh, in-person teaching is going on? Um, but we did cover that. Um, 
through academic uh, consideration. Great. Okay, wonderful. Well, we're, we're heading into the final section of this webinar. I, I realize it's gone on uh, for a bit longer than we anticipated. I hope you're all okay to stay on the call. As mentioned, it is being recorded, so you can certainly refer back to this recording. Um, we wanted to just give you a preview of what the latter part of your, your exchange looks like, uh, so completing your fall term. Over the course of the fall term, we will have some opportunities for you to volunteer with our office and be an exchange ambassador. So this could include uh, joining us for a webinar, talking about your home university, or talking about your exchange experience, coming up to fairs or other social events. We'll contact you in advance if you uh, to let you know when these events are happening in case you want to participate. But we also just have included at the bottom of the slide a prompt for you to contact us if you're interested in learning more. We know some of our partner universities will require their students to volunteer and get that experience while they're abroad. So don't hesitate to reach out if that's a requirement from your home uni and you want to talk about that more. We're happy to give you more information. In terms of the remainder of the term, we're going to talk about exams and transcripts. So get down into the, the nuts and the bolts of, of completing your exchange. Final exams for the fall term are held between December 8th and December 22nd. And final exams for the winter or full year quizzes are in April, from April 14th to April 30th. You're going to find the exam schedule will appear halfway through the relevant term, so usually around end of October for a fall term, usually around end of February for the winter term and you'll find it on your Solus account. It's really important to note that exams uh, at times and dates typically cannot be changed by the university. So please ensure you're not booking any travel home or around Canada or Ontario during that time. And if you experience extenuating circumstances, please contact our team and we will help you uh, move through that process. We have an opportunity for students whose first language is not English to be granted extra time on their final examinations by the exams office. So we will be letting the exams office know if you are studying English as an additional or if you're studying in English as an additional language, you speak another language as your first language. Um, and then they will contact you with an opportunity for additional time on your final exams. And finally, we know it's really important that your Queen's transcripts gets home at the end of your exchange so that you can transfer your credit. So know that we will be sending your Queen's transcript to your home university for free at the end of your exchange. Um, but we will only send your transcript if there are no outstanding fees on your Solus account. Now, all of the information I just spoke about is happening at the end of your exchange. So please rest assured that we will follow up with information as the terms come to an end. So what happens next? We want you to mark the important course registration dates and other dates that we've mentioned in your diary or your scheduler or your agenda. We want you to revisit both the pre-departure and the arrival checklist. Monitor your Queen's email account. That's really important. Try and take a look at that every day. Attend the exchange orientations that we've promoted and suggested. Please travel safely and remember to use that arrival checklist. Contact our team if you're having any concerns or issues or if you just need advising. And uh, we can't help but do a social media plug. Make sure you follow us on socials. We are at Queen's U IPO. So that wraps our session. It was uh, very full of information. We hope it's helpful for you. Again, you don't need to remember it all today. You can refer back to the slides and or the uh, recording, but I'm happy to take questions at this point. I am gonna turn the recording off. Um, so feel free to, to use your microphone um, and ask any questions that you may have.